One. All right. We are uh, live with Sir Timothy Thrapp and Wits Ministries. It is November 21st, I believe, uh, 2012. And here in the United States of America, I guess it's the day before Thanksgiving. So, anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Because we were just discussing that. Over right. here, I'm right now I'm ministering over in the Philippines, and right now their Thanksgiving's on Sunday, and so we have a special uh, Thanksgiving uh, meeting uh, for healing the sick. We're going to have hundreds of people show up, I think, as is way it's planned on Sunday. So, well, yeah, three days difference, I guess. Right, right, yeah. So, uh, and we have an exciting show tonight. So, uh, I'll let you get rolling because I got a feeling it's going to. Uh, we're going to have a lot of questions maybe at the end of the show. You never can tell. Yeah. Well, we've got some awesome teaching tonight. We're going to be giving away more details about over Unity Motors and generators. And there have been a number of replications already on the video we're going to show. And these people, of course, took consultation from us, uh, which is true about almost all the organizations that are actually have anything legitimate in free energy. And then even a lot of them that don't have anything legitimate started out. Uh, taking consultation uh, for us, for, from us. Uh, Brother Rand is our moderator on the chat window. Uh, Brother Lidke is, uh, he's kind of doing other things, but he's also recording. He says it's, uh, he says he's usually able to get it to work uh, even though he's not there. So that's good. And uh, uh, anyway, so welcome everyone to the program. And as always, we're going to start out with a word from the Lord. Because the most important technology you ever learn, and the easiest one to learn, is the power of God, which you could say it's uh, you know changing the world around us as we believe and as we act and as we think, and, and most of all believe in harmony with God and His Word, uh, and that make it a point never to doubt God's Word. People, people ask me uh, sometimes if I believe. I went just the other day. A guy asked me if I believe that uh, Noah actually took two of every animal into the ark, like the Bible says. And yeah, then they said, that's a lot of animals. I said, yeah, well, I believe it. If you start doubting God's word, then you have no basis for your faith, and then your miracles will disappear. So I'm going to believe every word in here. Uh, you know, it's there are times, you know, when it says like a day, and, you know, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. People think that was a 24-hour day. Uh, there's are times when uh, the translation isn't the greatest. In other words, that day could easily be translated epoch or a period of time. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we don't want to doubt the Word of God as it's originally written in the Hebrew and the Greek. Uh, but uh, I do, sometimes I find translations that are not very good, including in the King James. But there's, there's others, you know, if you read a lot of them and you read the Greek and the Hebrew, you can usually get the full sense of what God's saying there. And then you never want to doubt God. You always want to believe what He has to say. So in this one in 2 Corinthians 8, 9, it says... For we know that the grace or the undeserved kindness of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. That's our theme scripture we've been teaching about financial success. Again, I'm not bragging on myself, I'm bragging on Jesus. Uh, the people here at this ministry, myself included, have all been entrepreneurs, people that have learned how to run businesses and how to make things work and how to be highly successful, and we've all been highly successful. Most of the preachers that you hear teach this, they've never been highly successful at anything as far as business goes in their life other than maybe running a ministry, uh, which, of course, that's that's serious work, too, uh, as as I'm finding out more and more. <laughs> I've been, uh, been uh, the spokesman for many years, but uh, it's, it's a lot of work. Uh, but God is good, and it's the best work there is when you're working for the Lord. So anyway, so the point is that Jesus is saying that, or the Bible saying that Jesus was in heaven, he's very rich, we know that in heaven everybody's very rich, they have full supply, in other words, everything you need. But the word rich is literally in Greek, full supply. In other words, we think nowadays rich means you're a billionaire or a millionaire or a hundred millionaire, everybody's got their own idea where rich is. Uh, that's not what the Bible means by rich. The Bible doesn't mean millionaire, billionaire, or trillionaire. There's no there's no billionaires or millionaires or trillionaires in heaven. Everybody's got plenty, and that's what full supply, that's what rich means. So Jesus literally left heaven where the streets are paved with gold and all this stuff, 
and came to this earth. He became poor. He lived uh, as a poor man on this earth. And some one scripture says he didn't have anywhere to lay down his head. He didn't have anywhere to even a pillow or a bed. Uh, he said something to that effect once in his life. Another another place it said he had his own house. Uh, it implied he had his own house. It said he went to his own place. Um, so anyway, but it says for our sakes he became poor that you through his poverty might become rich. You see, there's a great substitution. The Messiah, the Christ, is a substitution. He presented a substitutionary sacrifice. He took our sins. He took our sickness. He's, he took those on himself for us. And he took them, and of course, it killed him very quickly. That's why he died so quickly on the cross. The, the, the rulers were surprised at how quickly he died. They didn't have to break his legs. The other two, they had to break his legs. Because God put upon him the sickness of, and the iniquity, the sin and the sickness of us all. The Bible says that. And uh, if we believe God's word, like I say, if you believe God's word, you'll get miracles. If you don't believe God's word, you won't get miracles. So you got to believe. You got to base your faith on something. And something I'd say the best thing you can base your faith on is God and His word, because He doesn't lie. And if we can base our faith on that, we'll see miracles. And we see weather miracles all the time here. We see healing miracles all the time here, even in the United States. Uh, and we've talked about all the chemtrails where we've neutralized them by the power of God and commanded, commanded them to be turned into healthy things. And they disappear right in front of, you, in front of your eyes uh, as, a, as a sign from God that they are being neutralized. And yet they previously they might have hung there for four or five hours, you know, gradually descending toward the earth. Um, other times they're just freshly sprayed, and I've actually commanded the airplanes to stop spraying, and they stop. Uh, I have commanded them to follow this guy, and I see them follow this guy. And so this is what people don't realize: is chemtrails are, are chemical warfare. It, there is a, acts of war going on against the United against the country we call uh, America, uh, the, the land we call America. And and if you're Americans, and you have a responsibility to look to stand up in faith and let God do your battles for you. The Bible says if we're faithful to him, if we're loving him, if we're reaching out toward him in love every day, we're keeping his commandments, then he will fight our battles for us. He will fight our wars for us. And so these people that are doing acts of war, all we have to do is stand up in faith and take authority and command it and believe it's done before it looks like it's done. You command that that chemtrail is neutralized before it looks like it's neutralized, then it's neutralized. It's that simple. You can protect your whole area, whatever you have the faith for. You might be able to protect your, your whole state. I get people all the time asking me to protect the whole United States. I can't do it. I don't have faith big enough for that. But one day I might. And one day I might have faith big enough for the whole planet, but I don't now. I have faith big enough for wherever I am, uh, one state, and I've even joined in people in other states, uh, Australia, for example. Um, the uh, Roma area, in about a 200-mile radius, we took authority for regular rain there, and they hadn't ra had you know, any rain to speak of in 20 years or so. We took authority for, I think it was 15 years, something like that, maybe 25 years. We took authority for regular rain there. I stood in faith with the people there, and that's the way God works. If, if you want a miracle in your area and you don't have faith for it yourself, study God's Word a lot you know, 10, 12 hours a day for about two or three weeks and fast and so on, and then ask somebody to join. If you still don't have faith, ask somebody to join you in faith that has some faith, and I'm happy to do that. Uh, we've seen miracles after miracles after miracles. Anyway, so Jesus became poor, or went under lack, is what it's saying, so that we could have a full supply. He became our substitution so that we don't have to be poor. And that's it. We know that he took our, our sins. Everybody agrees with that. All over all over Christendom or all over Christian faith, people agree that Jesus took our sins because the Bible says he did. It also says he took our sickness. And a lot of people have trouble with that. They can't believe God, Jesus took our sickness. You know, and uh, in other words, it's a substitution. Here it says he took our poverty too. So we don't have to be poor. And let me uh, share our scripture in Galatians. Just flip over a couple pages, about two or three pages. And it says, Christ has redeemed us, verse Galatians 3.13. Turn in your Bibles there. Just about three pages over from where we just were. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. Uh, so the point is, there was a curse of the law, and we've been redeemed from that. 
And so what is the curse of the law? If you look it up, you'll find out that it's sickness and poverty and, uh, and your enemies poisoning you and capturing you and, and bombing you and shooting you and all that kind of stuff. We can look it up on, we can look it up. We can look it up. But anyway, it says we've been redeemed from that curse. In other words, we've been, Jesus paid the price. He paid the price so that we don't have to be under that curse. And then in verse 14, he says he did this in order that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentile. If you're not a Jew and you're listening to this, if you're not an Israelite, then you're a Gentile. And that means God wanted the blessings of Abraham to come on you, is what he's saying there. And, and so he offered Jesus, or Jesus offered his own life as a sacrifice so that you could get those blessings. And so we can find out what those blessings are too. You can read about them. You find out that it's wealth and happiness and prosperity and all that stuff. It's the blessings of Abraham. He wants those on you. Uh, in any way, so the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Jesus Christ. If you're a Gentile in Jesus Christ, then that blessing's for you. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So that we might receive the promises that God has made in some spirit and, uh, and through faith. In other words, we believe and therefore we receive, you see. Now let's go back and help us to believe and receive if we look to see what those blessings and curses really were back in Deuteronomy. Flip back all the way to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and we'll start like at verse 1. Uh, now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord and to observe all carefully all his commands, which I have commanded you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. You see, people wonder why the United States was so successful for so long. 100 years, 150 years, very successful. Set high above all the nations of the earth. Why? Because they were listening to God. They were Christians. Most of the people 100 years ago were devout Christians, and they went to church regularly, and they prayed regularly, and they studied the Bible regularly, and they kept the Ten Commandments. They did, they did their best to serve God. And God set them high above all the nations. And the last 20 years has been a huge falling away. The last 50 years has been a huge falling away due to all kinds of faults. Uh, false doctrine, uh, you could say brainwashing if you want to, people, a lot of people nowadays don't believe in God anymore, you know, and they don't know what the ten, even one of the ten commandments, you know, they might get two or three, but, uh, and I'm not saying we're under the law, we're under grace, but the, but still, the laws apply, you know, another thou shall not kill, uh, thou, thou shall not lie, thou shall not steal, if we love our neighbor, we're not going to do those things, uh, uh, in other words, uh, the love of God fulfills all the law. And let's, let's read it. So it says, all these blessings will come upon you. He'll set you high above all the earth. All these blessings, verse 2, all these blessings shall overtake you and, over, and come upon you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed you'll be in the city. Blessed you'll be in the country. Blessed you'll be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, the increase of your cattle, the increase of your herds and, the, and your flocks and your livestock. Blessed will be your basket and your kneading bowl, your flour, your bread. Bless you be in your kind of manner. Bless you be in your love. The Lord will cause your enemies to rise up against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you, and shall flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command blessings upon you in your storehouses and in, and in all to which you have set your hands, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord has given you. The Lord God will establish you as a holy people unto himself. If you keep the commandments, of the Lord. See, the, the book said these blessings belong to us, and it goes on and on the whole page. It's really great. I've never used the time to learn from all these blessings because they're being out. They belong to us. That's what the Galatians are saying. But it also says if we don't keep it, then the curses belong to us. If we don't keep the law, uh, verse 15, we'll skip a little bit there. It said, uh, if you should, if, but if you shall come to pass, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe his commands and his statutes and keep them, then these curses will overtake you. Cursed you shall be in the city, cursed you shall be in the country, cursed you shall be in the basket, in your knee bowl, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your land, in the decrease of your, off, of your cattle, of your offspring, of your flocks. Uh, cursed you be when you come in, cursed you be when you go out. Uh, the Lord will give you confusion, cursing, uh, rebuke, and all your hands plan to do will be destroyed until you perish. So if everything's going wrong, you're really messing stuff. In other words, if, you, if it seems like everything you do is under some kind of curse that doesn't go right, then you're missing 
the impeaching the Jews and the New Covenant and even New Covenant, uh, but mainly the New Covenant where he says we have to believe and have to start talking right and thinking right. There's a number of brothers I remember. I remember visiting one farmer who uh, he, he, he used to have good success, but the last four years he said he just couldn't seem to make it. The rain wouldn't rain when he needed it, it wouldn't, plants wouldn't grow right, et cetera, et cetera. And I started talking to him about the power of believing, the power of claiming, and the power of taking authority over the darkness. See, there's an enemy. There's an enemy arrayed against you, an enemy arrayed against you. In other words, Satan and his bunch want you to fail. And we have authority over him. We have to literally command him to go and command him to leave, to leave our, our blessings. In other words, we have blessings. And I told that farmer this. I said, you know, we got to take authority over the enemy, command him to go. Uh, actually, I prayed for a little girl the other day, just skin and bones, and we took authority over that unclean spirit. I don't know what it was, uh, probably some kind of parasite or something, but it was, well, they're all, all unclean spirits are parasites, but I suspect she had some parasite in her flesh. Anyway, just literally skin and bones. Twelve years old, and she didn't, I don't think she weighed 30 pounds. She just, just literally skin and bones, just a skeleton with skin over it. And uh, she'd been like that for two or three years. We took authority over that. And before we left the home, she's walking. She hadn't walked in a long time, and she's she eating. I went and bought her a watermelon, brought it to her, told her to eat that whole thing. And uh, I don't care if it took her three days, I told her to eat, whole th- eat the whole watermelon. Yeah, because watermelon is fat, yeah, you know, she's too skinny. Uh, anyway, so God healed her. But we did take authority, and you got to take authority. you got to believe. you got to talk in harmony with that, think in harmony with that, and get rid of your negative thing. And negative. That's what I told the farmer, too. And he had the best crop. This is about a year ago. And I visited him here a couple times since I've been back, and uh, he's had the best crops he's ever had in the last two years, a year and a half since I visited him, about a year ago, I guess, about a year ago. Uh, and he's learned to make the right confessions, the right claims, the right confessions. And I always see results if people will do their part and they'll seek God. you got to seek God with all your heart. Don't be afraid to study his word every day, 20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Don't be afraid to do that because that's an awesome thing. And uh, there's a lot more great scriptures. I guess we'll save them for next week. But do read the blessings and the cursing. Do read that Galatians again a couple times so you realize those blessings and cursings are for you, the blessings are for you, if you're, if you're in faith, which most of us listening to this are, if you're a child of God, the blessings are for you, don't be afraid to learn what they are, and don't be afraid to claim them, and claim them and tell the devil to leave it alone, because you have authority over that rascal, you have authority over the devil and his bunch, uh, run him off, don't let him, don't let him, don't give him an inch, because if you give him an inch, you'll take a mile. Don't let him in your heart. Don't let him in your life. Don't let him in your in your mouth. Don't let him in anywhere. I remember one brother. He said, I've seen this happen to me too. This kind of thing. He went uh, went and got on an airplane. The air conditioner quit working. He went and got in a rent a car. The air conditioner quit working. He went and got in his hotel room. The air conditioner quit working. It happened like four times in the same day. Everywhere he went, the air conditioner quit working. I think he went shopping in the mall. And the air conditioner quit working. And uh, he realized it was an unclean spirit. And he took authority over that thing, commanded that thing to go. And, and as soon as he did that, it was in the hotel room that night, I think, and the air conditioner just quit working about 20 minutes. He was getting real hot. And uh, it was down south in Arkansas, southern Arkansas somewhere. And um, he realized it was the devil doing this, following him around, killing all the air conditioners. And uh, he commanded that thing, that devil, to leave. And in Jesus' name, he took authority about, about midnight. He'd been sweating for quite a while, 20, 30 minutes. And, and uh, he commanded that thing to leave. And as soon as, it la- as soon as he commanded that, the air conditioner started back up, started getting cold again. It was The motor was running, but the, there was no cold air coming out. And it got nice and cold in his room, and he slept slept all night. Uh, so you, we got to learn to take authority over these things. Don't let don't let the devil and his bunch walk all over you and keep you down and downtrodden. And that includes finances. We'll we'll talk more about finances next week. We'll we'll talk about how you have spiritual authority to command funds to come in, and how you take authority over the devil and command him to leave your funds alone. But just briefly, basically, just command him and then believe. What to claim? What do you need? And believe it, and then do something you know in other words you got to be doing something to get to get the funds to come in do some kind of work at least look for a job or something people that do commanding and then never do anything physically to in harmony with that uh you know that's that's not faith either faith is action you gotta you gotta believe it say it believe it and act like it say it say it act like it receive it and then tell it so when somebody uh offers you a good job or a good opportunity receive it and then tell it to others 
God bless everybody out there. We're gonna we're gonna show a jump into a video here on our second part of the show. We usually have a great video, and this one's one of the best. Um, it's a group that I've consulted with a number of times. Uh, UFO politics are not one individual; it's a group of people there, and uh, they have made some great videos. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna borrow one of theirs and show it tonight. And uh, if you'd like to learn more about motors and so on, watch the whole video. We're not showing the whole thing. We're showing about 10 minutes of it. But, uh, uh, you know, feel free to watch the whole thing a couple times and take notes. And uh, and you'll see that a whole bunch of people have already duplicated this. If you look on YouTube, uh, you know, look on the right-hand side when you're playing this on your own computer, and you'll see several people duplicated it, got, it, got their motors more efficient, and so on. Right, so, right. I'm I'm back with you, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I didn't give you a chance to say anything. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh yeah, I've got the uh, video ready to roll here. Let me just. Uh, I was going to. Uh, let's see, brother Randy, he's the one uh, taking care of the uh, the chat room tonight, isn't he? I'm going to go ahead and give him the link to the video here, real quick, and he can post it in the chat room. Yeah, he can post it in the chat room. Hopefully. Hopefully everybody doesn't decide to watch it right now. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna show a piece, and then uh, and then we're gonna be talking about it. So they don't want to watch it right. You know, they don't want. That's do what that. I'm saying. No, they might miss some important stuff when they're in the discussion or whatever. Right. Uh, but uh, they can watch it later. And and brother Lidke is also pretty good later at putting these. Um, but yeah, go ahead and chat, chat it to brother Andy. And brother Lidke is pretty good at putting the uh, uh, links, uh, all relevant links. Uh, to the uh, to everything we discuss on the show, he, he doesn't always get everything, but he gets about ninety percent of it. So he does a great job there. Uh, we appreciate him. So uh, all right, let me get uh, things ready here, and uh, then we'll come back and talk about this. the The part that uh, we're we're starting off with, just so people know, uh, like you like you said, we're not playing the full video. Uh, it starts off basically saying the symmetry fraud exposed, and they're talking about just a, a, a very simple explanation around how motors or generators are uh, engineered today, or you know have been for yeah. quite a while. In other words, in other words, they for over a hundred years, about a hundred years, they've been engineering them intentionally to be less than a hundred percent efficient. Right. And uh, and that's called, they're calling it symmetry. We don't call it symmetry. I didn't teach them this terminology. A lot of people that take the classes decide to come up with their own terminology or they already have their own terminology before they take the classes. Uh, so, you know, whatever. But, uh, yeah, we would call this an open system. The, the ministry would call uh, the right way to do it open systems and the wrong way to do it closed systems. And closed systems are basically uh, impossible, but you can have a system that's relatively closed. In other words, mostly uh, if your magnetic field are totally in case there's no field into the environment around, uh, or your electric fields are totally in case not, nothing goes around, then those are closed systems. Uh, if they are allowed to go into the surroundings, it, theoretically they extend to infinity. Infinity is a lot of power. You know, if you can influence infinity, you, you can influence power, and the power is you know that's how you get free energy basically if you right. if you close it off and you cut yourself off from that infinity well then you uh, uh you cut yourself off from a lot of power right okay well let me get the video rolling and you probably won't be able to you can't see it i know and you probably will there's not really any um uh dialogue with this video basically they they present their uh, ideas with text and pictures and, di and diagrams uh, so we'll just play this through. People can watch it, and then uh, we'll bring you back. Uh, we're also going to bring back our guest JT, and I think it's going to be a pretty interesting uh, conversation tonight. So uh, uh, hold on there, Sir T, and we'll bring you. We'll see you here in just uh, about ten minutes. If you'd like to read any of the writings, feel free. Uh, I won't be able to, but yeah, if you if you you know, however the Lord leads you, it's fine with me. All right, all right, okay. Thanks. So here we go.
Okay, we're back. Oh, you're muted. Okay, Sir T, we can't hear you. I think you're muted. Nope, you're still muted. <laughs> Yeah, we, we see you, but we can't hear you. Okay, let's see if this thing, it doesn't, okay, there we it. go, there that's we it. go. There we go. Yeah, it didn't want to let me unmute. The, the computer I'm using has got a lot of issues, uh, but we're believing God uh, it's healed. And uh, yeah, yeah, anyway, it, it's amazing. It actually functions as good as it does, considering all the things that are going on in there. <laughs> so... <laughs> Anyway, uh, we're, we're, well, that's a great video, and let's add JT before he's hanging on. Should I go ahead and add him right now? Uh, i tell you what, uh, either you, if he's not here right now, yeah, go ahead and add him, or I can add him. Okay, I'll add him. Uh, you know, if I lose, if for some reason I get dropped, you know, you just call me back. But, yeah. uh, uh, you know, and you might have to call him back, too. We'll see what happens. If Hopefully that don't happen, but it has happened before. Uh, I've clicked Add. And it doesn't look like it's doing anything. Oh, here we go. Let's see if this does anything. There we go. All right. So, hello, hello. hello Brother JT. How are you this evening? Greetings, gentlemen. And how are you and the audience? Ooh, we're doing fine. Welcome to the program. And I'll apologize to the audience. Uh, JT's connection is too slow for video, so it's audio only. But, uh, you know, it's great to have you with us, even in audio only, brother. I yeah, appreciate it, guys. Uh, how's the show going so far? So far, it's going good. Did you? Uh, I, I know you watched the video. I know you're an electrical kind of guy yourself. Uh, so if you want to make any comments about that about that video, go right ahead. I'm sure we'll have some questions later. Oh well, yeah. I mean, you know, there's just certain obvious things there. How you basically got a device that's sort of motoring and generating, sort of at the same time on two separate. To independent coils, uh, so uh, it's kind of an interesting idea to do that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, these uh, the UFO politics group is a group, and they don't want to be named individually. But uh, they they have taken some consultations from us, and they decided to publish some of the stuff they were learning and doing. And there's been a number of duplications already, so. It's it's all good. Uh, if you look on YouTube and play that one, you'll see the duplications on the right hand side. I found four that said they had duplicated it, and all four of them reported improvements in efficiency. So that's that's all good. Right. Uh, well, yeah, I think I think in terms of generators and motors, um, you know, traditionally, as you and I have talked about, motors, generators, the generators usually, uh, you know, collide. The energy, the coils are not usually independent in a generator, these three-phase generators, common stuff like that. So in general, I think you and I have discussed the idea of improving generators by just actually isolating the windings a lot of times just in the generators for some benefits uh, just by doing that. Yeah, there's a number of ways to improve motors and generators, and of course the ministry 
been doing it a long time. And just so I didn't introduce you properly, JT, I'll introduce you a little oh, bit for those that didn't, don't know you. Uh, JT is an independent engineer that came to WITS uh, probably uh, 15 years ago, at least 10 years ago, like probably 15 years ago now, and uh, verified all our stuff is real. And uh, JT is also, he's worked for uh, big industry and big, uh, big organizations in free energy and otherwise. Uh, and so he's a world-class engineer and scientist, and we're blessed to have him on the show. And uh, we do agree everything I'm saying is correct. And uh, as far as if you confirm all of our stuff, I know you're probably too modest to, to make a world-class scientist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I appreciate all your, uh, your support there and all of that. Um, as as the your, or the listeners are probably learning readers because I say readers I have a book people read my book about you as well uh, the the listeners you know, the new ones the ones that know you the WITS organization has many 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 technologies so when you suggest that I verify that you know all of them there's really quite a list there so I, I've yeah. verified well, many verified many you verified about a dozen of them would you say that's about right Yes, uh, but my goodness, uh, the organization has been involved with uh, tens, hundreds of uh, incredible inventions. Yeah, we have over 6,000 we would like to get out, uh, so there's no shortage uh, whatsoever, and 6,000 different technologies, uh, 2,000 that we're, uh, you know, we're openly discussing and showing videos of and everything else, so yeah. And, uh, yeah, so anyway, so JT, you've actually had the opportunity to live in a house totally run by quantum energy. Is that correct, JT? Yeah, that's correct. A facility, a research facility, actually, I guess what we call it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so it's, that's good. And, and you were there about two months, or say? Yeah, I would say thereabouts. Uh, we you know, was, you know, running every day in this manner. And, you know, we've talked about this on some of the other shows. We're swinging over again for people that, Maybe are needing to hear that you know you you actually have had had me uh, look over those systems for for a couple months and see see the extra energy uh, all the time. Yeah, we have we get a lot of new viewers, and plus uh, people have to hear something a number of times before they can get it in their head. Uh, in other words, even you know, no matter how true it is, most people don't learn the first time they hear something. Uh, generally speaking, people have to hear five or ten or twenty times before they before they understand it or or can grasp it. Especially if it's something new, totally new and shocking. Uh, years ago, you know, I would tell people that we've had things running for for you know, in dozens of years, which is the truth is hundreds of years. The ministry has a hundred. It's been uh, since the eighteen seventies that we got the quantum energy machines perfected, and so it's been one hundred and forty years. But it, people people couldn't grasp it. In other words, you could tell them that, and five minutes later they they forgot everything. Or you show them a bunch of demos, and five most people five minutes, ten minutes later they forgot everything they saw. Uh, they they've been so brainwashed yeah. to think it's impossible that they literally can't remember it because it's, they've been brainwashed. Think it's impossible. <laughs> Well, I guess I could, I guess you could say people have a short attention span. Anyway, we have a variety of topics we'd like to talk about this evening. Yeah? Uh, okay, I'll let you get good started. I just wanted to introduce you properly and and let you say a, a word or two about uh, you know about who you are and what you've seen and so on. So yeah, go right ahead. Uh, whatever you'd like to jump into, uh, I know uh, yeah, I know you want to talk a little bit about ancient technologies, ancient civilizations. Is that should do we start with that one? Yeah, we can we can do that one uh, a little bit about the pre-flood civilizations, uh, just to bring a little awareness to a couple things that are happening. Uh, one of the past pre-flood civilizations was there was a continent referred to as the continent of Atlantis. To those who've heard that term, and so there are of course are many many uh, countries uh, that were around, but the idea of this one area. Uh, being covered up by water, and the in mentioning it here, it's just to say that there's really pressing evidence these days uh, by a professor Santos that Atlantis has been found, the continent, uh, and it's in the South Pacific Ocean, uh, South China Sea, uh, and and this is pretty shocking news. And, and again, in, in bringing it up, the, the, the long lost look for these lost continents, these lost lands, uh, had to do with the fact that the flood actually kind of covered the, all these places up and they've, they've been buried underwater. And, you know, they're not easy to find, whatever uh, place you may pick. We, I mentioned Atlantis because that's one that has been talked 
about uh, for a long, long time and thought to be a myth, of course. My son, yeah. of, uh, but we know a myth for lack of evidence. Yeah, amen. We know the Bible does, it does talk about pre flood civilization in various places, and they were very advanced. Uh, they said that Jesus said that when he returns, that the, the level of advancement uh, basically will be about the same as it was before the flood. And he said also the violence will be filled the whole earth, which is. We close that. In other words, talk about war. We just want to fight about the war. We talk about war. And then we have any returns. That's one of the which right now we are talking about the second war. It's called war. Yeah. Okay. Sir, people. It's break. It's break. It's uh, breaking up, sir. T, when you're talking. Yeah, you're really breaking up. Maybe you could cut your video. All right. Okay, go ahead, JG. Whatever, whatever you want to talk about. I, I, oh, is my video still on? No, it's uh, it's turned off. Well, yeah, there were a few topics, though, gentlemen, that uh, I thought would provide a little uh, insight for people. And I realize that the listeners have could be a varied background. Some some may have some very strict interpretations of world history. And uh, in in presenting what I present to anybody, I can only just say that you know it's certainly uh, not uh, in my interest to. Uh, I'm, I'm not a, trying to, you know, upset anybody's beliefs. It's just that, uh, as a scientist, there's something in the scientific world that we call evidence, and that evidence is something that we use to look at th things, to discover things, so forth and so on. And uh, the lack of evidence is not always proof that something does not exist. Uh, the case in point being that, you know, the world at one time thought that the world was flat. Everybody in the world thought this. And of course, you know, the evidence in front of everybody, it seemed like it was flat, but, you know, in fact, it was not. And in saying that, you know, to say that uh, lost continent Atlantis has been found, so on and so on, where's all the evidence? Well, there's a book that talks about that. Free Energy Cylinder Boat, it's thought to be a hoax, a myth, uh, and certainly there's plenty of evidence now through the WITS organization and through actually many, many others in the world now as well, that, that this concept that we call free energy, which really is more, more of a more energy out system than in system, really a COP is better to describe that. Uh, but in, in this ex exotic area, whether it be uh, the pre-flood lost continents or what may have gone on there, uh, it's certainly thought by some that the types of technologies that they may have had would include some sort of gravity remediation. In other words, how did they move those big stones? How did they cut those big stones? So even though in some circles it may sound like we're dealing with Stone Age cavemen, uh, rock men, you know, from the Stone Ages, uh, really uh, the evidence that we use to say that, that in the past it was just the Stone Ages is, is really not very solid and if in fact a lot of the evidence got covered up by a flood well then that might explain why so much has been lost I would like, I'd like to comment if you can hear me good are you hearing me good brother Martin okay good uh, I want to say this uh, I've had a little time to investigate the, uh, the, the what they call the chocolate hills here uh, more thoroughly, and these are, I can say without a doubt, these are man-made constructed uh, pyramids. Some of them are pyramids with four sides, and others are perfect cones, and these are huge. These are bigger than the pyramids of Giza, uh, probably rivaling the pyramid of Bosnia, which is supposedly the largest one in the world. But these over here, there's literally thousands of them. I'd say there's and, and, and this would fit with JT's uh, theory there and other people's theory that, uh, that uh, you know, this, this was the heart of an advanced civilization they're calling Atlantis, which I don't think they call it Atlantis, but whatever you want to call it, uh, an advanced civilization before the flood. 
Uh, and when it flooded, it you know probably was a comet that uh, got captured by the Earth. Uh, and you know comets are mostly uh, water, and uh, so a large comet that rained a lot on the Earth, and uh, and then of course uh, some dirt's in there, so that would account for the three or four feet of dirt that was all over all the old pyramids that they found six feet in some places. Uh, it rained mud, it rained mud, basically rain water and it rained dirt from the sky, and we still get dirt occasionally from the sky. People people don't realize this, but uh, if after it rains, there's there's dirt in places. That's why your car is dirty after it rains, you know, stuff like that. Uh, there's still some dirt that comes down, but uh, during that uh, flood, there was you know literally trillions and trillions and trillions of gallons of water and and, and a lot of dirt that came down from the sky. And that's the evidence is that the pyramids are covered here. They're covered. But if you dig down, you will find some of those white stones similar to what they're, and it's actually concrete, similar to what they're finding over in Bosnia. But the main structures are, are a dark stone, a dark, uh, it looks like almost volcanic. It looks a lot like uh, Coral Castle. I've been to Coral Castle, the place that Lee Scallion built out of coral. It looks a lot like coral, but I would say it's volcanic rather than coral. Uh, it's a very hard stone. So most of these pyramids, literally tens of thousands of them, and they're not just on Bohol, they're on many islands all over the Philippines. Uh, and I would say tens of thousands of these things are still above water, and they go right out into the ocean in some places and go underwater. In other words, the water level used to be a lot lower, or the land mass was a lot you know, higher or vice versa, whatever. Uh, and uh, most likely the water level was a lot lower before the flood. So I can say without a doubt that these things are man-made, and there's a huge number of them here, thousands, literally tens of thousands. Yeah, and that's that's amazing. What's going to be happening, of course, is there's uh, getting to be a huge worldwide archaeological effort to explore the South China Sea now that the evidence, again, the evidence is strongly indicating in the last eight, nine years that, in fact, that is where uh, this continent was and where it got lost. Um, in mentioning that, though, uh, that just makes things very intriguing for the next 5, 10, 20 years as some of that evidence surfaces. I think we're all being for a lot of surprises. Another area I like to talk a lot about, of course, is what is called anti-gravity. Uh, it's And we're using the term very loosely. Uh, uh, in in my book and some of the work you've done, Wits has done, has been in the area of gravity. Remediation is what I like to call it. And again, the thought here, the thought of inspiration, like you know, saying to people the world is round, that used to only be a thought of inspiration because if you thought the world was flat, of course, and you heard people talking about the round earth, you know, well, anyway, at one time that did inspire people. This idea that gravity can be engineered with magnetic fields, that is what the evidence is clearly indicating. And, and that evidence is very strong. It's worldwide strong. Again, which organization has done some work along these lines. And now, of course, many other people out there are starting to do this work where they're finding that the mixing and matching of magnetic fields, electromagnetic fields, is producing what they call electrogravity. And so this is a very hot and exciting area. A world-changing event is occurring uh, in this area. And so this will go a long, long ways, I think, in uh, changing people's view that, that has been very limited. The scientific view of gravity, in fact, is rather poor if you ask most honest scientists what gravity is if they answer you honestly they will tell you they do not know well yeah that's the average average idiot running around loose but if you ask the uh, uh, the scientists that work at the government labs especially over here the government manufacturing facilities they're, ma they're mass producing flying saucers like you wouldn't believe over here uh, yeah, I see them every day here um, and so, you know, they're mass producing them seriously. And of course, most of these are WITS designs, World Improvement Through the Ministry's designs. Uh, but uh, they are, so they're obviously somebody that knows, but they won't talk. You know, they, they, they want everybody to stay stupid, so they tell them, you know, we don't know what gravity is, et cetera, et cetera, even though we do know what gravity is. <laughs> so, so. And, and again, the, the thought of inspiration I'm giving people here, just we're trying to bring it down to home. You know, that in fact it's a matter of mixing and matching magnetic fields in the right way. There's a bit of engineering involved here, as 
uh, Brother Timothy is well aware, um, and the information that's surfacing from that black world, the information that's surfacing from others, um, clearly indicates that what we've all called gravity, what we've all been misled to believe, is in fact uh, something that can be engineered with the electromagnetic fields, and that should be some very exciting news is for those who are unaware of, of this type of thing. Yeah, and so, during, you know, we are planning to do upcoming shows on gravity and even have a video or two uh, of different things that are gravity-related. And so, yeah, we'll be talking more about that in the future. And most likely how this relates to the, to the topic of ancient civilizations is they had, you know, they look at these ancient civilizations like the Maya and the Inca and, and, and many of these ancient, you know, Atlantis, any of the pre-flood civilizations, and they, they try to, traditional scientists try to say they were, they were, um, they didn't have the wheel, so they weren't advanced. Yet, uh, the truth is, they were very advanced. They didn't need the wheel. If you got flying saucers, you don't need the wheels. You flying saucers don't need wheels. Uh, you know, they fly just fine without them, you know. Well, <laughs> if, if, if again, we, we uh, and everyone listening, please understand that people have been looking at the world through a very tiny filter by using the understanding of gravity as it's been propagated for who knows 2,000 years, Newton, Einstein, uh, by using that filter, by us thinking, being taught to think that gravity is about the mass of the planet attracted by the mass of the formula for gravity says it's masses that are doing this gravity thing, that is the scientific view and what people like me and others are saying is that view appears from the evidence we have to be, uh, uh, well, not the proper view. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of uh, phony baloney that's being promoted, and uh, yeah, you know, so don't, you know, don't get, you know, people, people need to keep their minds uh, open to learn the reality. We'll be talking more about anti-gravity in future shows. We have covered it in past shows, but it's a, it's a lot to it. It is advanced technologies, and so it doesn't hurt to keep covering it to help people learn. And, uh, yeah, it's a fascinating subject as well. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions and comments. If you have anything you'd like to add uh, before we go on to the questions and comments, Brother uh, JT? Well, again, just these, these areas that um, uh, the science, whether it be science from the past, current science, so forth and so on, how, how do people come up, up with all these scientific theories and opinions? Uh, well, a lot of it's based on very limited uh, understandings and limited points of view and so when people try to look at things through those very limited understandings and limited glasses those limited filters of, of course they're going to come up with a lot of short uh, short answers that may, may not be correct yes that's absolutely true uh, yeah absolutely true all right brother and brother martin should, do you have any comments before we go on to the questions yeah i, I have a couple of comments i want to want to throw out here um I know JT, you've been on the show before, and and you have touched on uh, on gravity. Uh, one of the things you mentioned in a prior show, I believe, was that uh, the the more traditional uh, brainwashing—I'm just going to call it what it is—says that gravity is a pull. And you said uh, on the show, well, it's not. It doesn't necessarily. Uh, it's not necessarily a pull. It could be a push coming from everywhere. And uh, that's one thing that is is a is almost exactly opposite of, of all we're taught, and uh, it, it's it's almost like we're being uh, pushed to the surface of the planet, you might say. Uh, and so uh, the, the, that was a very um, revealing uh, aspect of things because that opens the door for people to start thinking, wait a minute, uh, you know. How could that be possible? Because uh, you know, because they know all these, uh, they know all these things from their textbooks in elementary school and so forth. That seems logical that it's a pull, but but I have actually seen experiments that uh, demonstrate that uh, a push does work uh, in these cases if you if you think about it properly and you and you actually uh, you know logically. Uh, do the experiments and and allow for a, a push type uh, field or force force I should say I guess or, or something so you might might just want to touch on that a, a, a bit since uh, we have talked about that in the past 
uh, because I think that's a fascinating thing for people to kind of explore. Okay, go, go ahead, JT. You want to comment on that? Yeah, and again, just a brief comment is, is that once you get the correct view of what gravity is, which is it is a manufactured phenomenon, gravity is the result of of something happening and that something is magnetic fields are mixing around with electric fields <coughs> these are very basic fields and in that mixing and matching what falls out of it is what we call gravity and so this idea that the gravity is a mysterious force that we do not understand that is what I'm doing my best to dispel here it's not a mysterious force that we do not understand. It is a force that comes from the interaction of these fields. We do right. understand it. That's right. That's right. Okay, very good. Thank you, JT. And we'll cover this more on this subject more in future shows as well. Right. Okay, uh, I, got, I got one more now. I want to do one okay, more. Right. And then, uh, okay. if that's all right, I, I want to go back to the video that we played that uh, uh, I know the terminology that was used in the video isn't something that I hear on 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 wits very uh, well. I never hear a lot of that terminology on wits. We don't you don't use those those terms. But uh, one of the things uh, in in some of the work that I've done in the past, uh, one of the things that's often ignored in uh, and I, I we're going to get a little bit technical here, and because I, I think we do have a uh, we have some technical viewers out there. Um, one of the things that's typically ignored is the uh, the inductor and the fact that the inductor actually does have a collapsing well you want to look at it this way a collapsing field that does induce something into uh, into the wires and can be captured and that's typically not even talked about or utilized in any way in uh, many conventional uh, uh, motors and generators. Uh, so it, maybe you could just speak to that a little bit. I know that uh, a lot of the WITS technologies, which are, you're right, there are so many of them, maybe some of the WITS technologies do utilize some of that, uh, uh, some of those ideas in terms of uh, being much more efficient about uh, uh, capturing some of these things. But I, I know that's not the entire the entire picture though. So uh, maybe if you could just talk about that, the induction uh, coil and uh, uh, the energy that can be, um, I guess, captured from, from an inductor. And you want Brother JT to talk about that? Yeah, actually either one if you guys want to talk about it. Yeah, sure. Brother JT, you want to go first or do you want, you want to say, yeah. if, you don't, if you don't want to say anything, you don't have to. I can do it. I can talk to you. Yeah, I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll give just a little bit on that and then you can give a little bit on that. Okay. Um, again, the conventional, the conventional idea is that once you uh, run some current through a coil and then you turn it off, you stop that current, conventional current. Well, the coil, of course, continues to go. It, it, it is not a type of device that just stops. You don't get electricity flowing in a coil and expect it to stop right away. So that capturing the back part in, in conventional motors and generators, they used to throw that away. That, that was just tossed, that kickback. It's called an inductive kick. It has many names. And that, that's just all very, very traditional and common knowledge of coils that when you turn it off, you're going to get a kick back which more efficient generators capture and reuse more efficient motors capture and reuse it but this again is just a very very basic level of getting a little more efficiency there's some other things that happen go on in those coils that uh, brother timothy's got um some really good knowledge on yes Yes, that's yeah, that's great. And the ministry, of course, Tesla. Tesla did a lot to figure this out, and uh, before him, Stubblefield did a lot to figure this out, and Michael Faraday. And we've had some great guys down through the years. Brother Michael Faraday was probably one of the most uh, genius-inspired men of God that ever walked the planet, uh, and did a lot to figure all this out and yeah you can make motors and generators that are much more efficient by harnessing the back EMF what's called back EMF or inductive kick whatever you want to call it properly 
and what's if you do it properly, uh, that is tapping the uh, the infinite, if you want to say it that way. In other words, electromagnetism in theory expands to the infinite. In other words, in theory, there's no. You say, well, how far does the magnetism goes? Well, it diminishes as it goes out, but in theory, it goes forever. It just gets smaller and smaller and smaller as it goes. So you're disturbing an infinite amount of of uh, energy particles, if you want to say it that way, or energy uh, energy particles. I guess is the best way. To to say it, uh, you're disturbing an infinite amount of them, so there's a possibility to, to get them aligned correctly to work with you. And the more you get them aligned correctly, the more uh, energy you can get. And we've made, uh, on the delay line motors, we have about uh, 100 different models, maybe 200 different models, and half of them are pulse type motors, the other half are, are AC motors, um, what we call AC at different frequencies. And uh, all of them utilize the inductive kick or back EMF or so on. Even AC, if you resonate it, the energy winds up going into the resonant circuit, the, the extra energy that you would get from a collapsing field because it does collapse because it goes through the to zero, you know, uh, whatever frequency you're, you resonate. If you're resonating 60 cycles, for example, it goes through zero 120 times a second. So you're getting um, energy uh, that could be called back EMF 60 times a second. That's what really makes a resonant circuit produce more energy is because you're harnessing the energy of the inductor which if it's made right will harness the energy of space and even the infinite so that's uh, we try to keep our terminology real simple uh, as simple as we can and and uh, that's why other you know don't always brother Martin was talking about terminology a little different but uh, our terminology is a little different try to keep it as simple as possible we try to use the original terminology and not change at all that uh, you know that was developed back in the 1800s uh, with the original brothers as much as possible we don't we try not to change it all like Keeley invented the the terminology uh, the triune polar field to describe the uh, all the different subatomic type particles and the way they're arranged and the way they work together and there's three primaries and so on and uh, and so we use that terminology but a lot of people come up with their own terminology so it, it's you know it's interesting stuff but yeah there's a huge amount of energy available in the infinite and pulsing is one way to, to access that and there's other ways that I think are even better but pulsing all of them relate all of them boil down to pulsing or, or some their version thereof because I would say even resonance is sort of pulsing and I, let me let me just uh, maybe kind of wrap that whole topic up what I'm hearing also is that uh, utilizing an inductor in that way where it's where it's pulsed and you do decide to collect uh, this extra energy that might come back from the coil uh, the kickback uh, that isn't necessarily the same type of particles that we're used to maybe I could say that right when you're tapping the infinite you're going to be a you're going to be gathering uh, everything that's out there uh, in other words, the electrons is just one type of subatomic particle. We're putting in electrons, and you wind up getting back a lot more than just electrons. I'll put it that way. Right, and see, that's a, that's 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 a very key point that I think that uh, that no one really talks about uh, too much, uh, and we're we're you all know uh, you you all know about a lot of that specifically. So uh, that's that's sort of a key point that uh, these machines take or can take advantage of. And if you're not looking for this, if you're not uh, if you're not aware of any of this, you you pretty much are ignoring uh, all of this. So um, I just wanted to sort of tell the audience that because I know there's some technical people probably watching. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Thank you for sharing that, Brother Martin. And thank you, Brother JT, for your excellent comments. we got a bunch of questions, so we'll move on to them so the show don't go too long. Uh, Brother Rand says, uh, would you, and I'll listen back to the teaching on financial success, would you say that business success is mostly a matter of faith? I would absolutely say it is. Uh, all, you know, hard work also, but and you know, following basic basic laws that God outlined. Uh, you know, paying your tithes, uh, working hard, being honest, uh, doing you know, giving people a good product, and so on. That's that's uh, and and it takes faith to do all that. In other words, sometimes it looks like you'd get ahead further if you weren't honest, but it's in faith that we go by faith and we're honest, and you know. So uh, it takes faith to do all that. You got to believe God, and yeah, business success 
is God will bless your efforts, and He does it miraculously sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes it just looks like a lot of hard work on your part. But if you really, if you really analyze it carefully, God is blessing you every step of the way. I'm tempted to tell the story about the guy in the helicopter. Uh, uh, he's, oh. He was uh, <laughs> one. I think this is one of JT's favorite stories. The guy wants rescued. Uh. He's on the. He's in the. Uh, he's in the uh, top of the roof, and there's a flood. And and some people people come by with a boat and they say, Come on, get in the boat and he says, No, I'm counting on God to save me and then a few minutes later somebody comes by the helicopter and says, Come on, get in the helicopter, no, I'm counting on God to save me and the flood's kinda of getting big deeper and the rain's getting deeper and so on and so forth. And uh, and pretty soon the dam breaks and the guy drowns and he, and he's in heaven and and uh, he he says hey God how come you didn't save me God says I sent you a boat and a helicopter <laughs> what more do you want <laughs> so people a lot of times don't recognize God you know they they say that's just a boat and a helicopter that's not God you know but God will do these things God will work through people is that the is that the story you were thinking of J T yeah yeah anyway. All right, let's go to the next one. Uh, Brother Riscala says, During this time of Thanksgiving, which is tomorrow, let's give thanks for world improvement through the Spirit Ministries. Thank you, Brother Riscala. Thank you. Yeah, we'll give thanks to God for making it possible, for, for motivating us to keep going and keep doing these things and helping the world. And uh, it's a wonderful time. Let's, let's go on to Brother David. And thank you, Brother Riscala, for that excellent comment. And Brother Randy. And uh, next, Brother David in Alaska. Uh, who's a good friend, known him for about 20 years or so. Uh, he says, how come closed systems are preached to be the law of physics when in fact they do not exist anywhere in the universe? Is this, is this a fabricated propaganda? What would you say, JT? In a word or two, yes. It's yeah. certainly fabricated. You're, you're using very limited thinking, limited views of the day, that, that stuff came out of the research and the steam engine and the idea that everybody wanted to put thing, things in a box, scientifically speaking, in a box and everyone one of these real convenient boxes. But if people look at the very documents themselves, the laws of thermodynamics, you will see that the doc documents themselves on their cover tell you that it's a hypothetical situation, actually. Yeah, closed systems are hypothetical, and uh, it's it, you know you can make systems that are mostly closed, and that's what most of the motors and generators are that are being mass produced today, in the uh, in that are available to the common man. I'll put it that way. Uh, the stuff that runs the flying saucers are not closed systems, and that's the reason flying saucers when they fly over often, especially the early days of before they got them very you know the, before they got all the bugs worked out. The first 40, 50 years they were making them, 100 years they were making we were making them. They would put out everybody's lights and there all kinds of things. Uh, the car wouldn't start, the car would die, your lights would go off, all kinds of things like that because they're open systems. Uh, they're harnessing energy all around them as they go. Uh, so that's yeah, that's a good comment, good question, brother uh, Dave in Alaska. Thank you. And we got another question from Joe in pa Panama. He's a new viewer. Welcome to the program, uh, brother Joe in Panama. He says, uh, "I came across a most profound m metaphor." And here it is. So he's making a comment. He says, um, in a room filled with darkness, the smallest of a candle can cause the darkness to flee. But in a room filled with light, it isn't possible for even the smallest amount of darkness to have the slightest effect. And then he says, I just love that. Blessings to you all. Yeah, thank you, Brother Joe in Panama. That's a great, great comment. Absolutely. And so we can be lights in this world. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify God. Yeah, every time there's a miracle, every time somebody's healed, which is every day in this in this ministry, uh, hundreds of, hundreds of times a day if you count everybody, probably uh, every single time. The darkness, all these people that want to argue and fight and tell you it's impossible, all of them shut up. They don't have nothing to say. The darkness fled. The, the, their minds are their minds are alert and paying attention for a few minutes. All of a sudden, even though uh, five minutes before that miracle, they wanted to argue and they hate and kill and fight and everything else. So yeah, the darkness flees, and the light is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. God is the light of the world. Would you have to, anything you'd like to add, Brother JT? <laughs> I'm just listening to that. You go ahead. Okay, next question. Uh, Brother uh, Chris Sachs says, I imagine this witch principle is also the case 
with regards to fuel mileage controlled by gas oh. computers. Uh, oh, yeah. You remember, you remember the like, witch? They're talking about the witch in that video? Yeah. Get me started on the gas thing, though. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to say, make a comment or two about the gas, about the gasoline, JT? Yeah. The, 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 his thing is that the, the, the so-called witch and the motors and generators, yeah, the, the gas thing is similar to, to deal with that person's question directly. He's saying that how somehow motors, generators, cars, whatever, they have some sort of built-in gotcha, like, you know, like either the engineers actually knew they were getting you or else they, uh, you know, we all think they probably knew what they were doing. The gas thing, as people know from my high-mileage gas device, I say you really can get your 100, 200 miles to the gallon if you heat that gas up to the right temperature and run it correctly and they don't want you to know that like the motors and the generators this this sort of nasty bugaboo in there that little voltage that seems to fight you and fight everything you're doing um yeah you know they don't even want you thinking about that really and believe me in engineering school that's not the way we looked at it you know, and we never really looked at it that way. Yeah. Like, like it was some kind of a bugaboo. We just were told to accept it. It's part of the design. It's just the way it works. And you know, you don't question these things. You just go along with it and say, "All right, well, that's just the way we have to build these generators for everybody." And the cars, the gas, his analogy, the gas thing. We're all taught the car burns the gas. You're not going to do any better. Just take it or leave it. So yeah. These are similar witch, witchy kind of deals, yeah. Yeah, yeah, an excellent comment. And just so everybody knows, uh, Brother JT has a, on our on our gifts page, uh, if you go to the website and find the gifts page, it's called gifts slash perks slash books slash consultations classes. Anyway, find that page, and JT has uh, two, he has a book called Free Energy 101, excellent book, uh, I'd recommend it highly. Uh, for those just starting out in free energy, and uh, and then and anybody who'd like to learn more and, and, and some interesting reading in general, uh, he also has a uh, high mileage uh, uh, plans, high mileage uh, report, I think it's called, and uh, just look on that. It's about the seventh plan down, one of the last plans on the gifts page. The, gift, the plans are at the top of the page, and the classes are at the bottom of the page. The book is kind of in the middle, probably, just after the plans, probably. Uh, feel free to look it over and pray about it. And you know, when you donate and get one of those, you're you're helping this cause and you're helping us move forward. We're we're really working hard to have uh, quantum energy in the home, to have a factory set up to where we can b provide these very cheaply. Right now, we can make them cheaper than solar. And good quality solar, top quality solar, and and quantum energy machines, uh, quantum energy machines, ha handmade or cheaper. If you do a large scale, it's three megawatts or bigger. Uh, and but we'd like to get them where everybody can have one to run their home at, at cheaper than, than fossil fuels, basically. And that will be soon. We, we're going to work hard for that. But do support the cause. Do pray about it as God leads your heart. You know, order some of JT's books and JT's uh, plans or anything else you see on the gifts page. Uh, you know, feel free to look it over and pray about it and do as God leads your heart. There's some excellent stuff there. Uh, that's. Uh, Can I make a quick, quick sure. comment there on? Go right ahead. The, yeah, the high mileage gas plans have been updated with uh, some, some information uh, that uh, expands upon the device that I, I basically told everybody about in there. There's a, like a version two of that device that even looks more exciting than version one. Yeah, and that one can that one can double your mileage, or it could even go five or ten times your mileage. We we yeah, what what the report takes you through is the report takes you through like how to get maybe fifty percent to one hundred percent, and then I go to two times, and I go to five to ten times. Yeah, and, and totally, so uh, totally it, it takes takes you through. Totally yeah, doable. I I remember when I was a kid, just uh, I think sixteen years old, fifteen, sixteen years old. Uh, a guy drove down from Kentucky or Tennessee. I lived in Florida. And uh, for a few years there, from when I was a teenager, and he showed me a car, a big Cadillac he had, that literally had the gas line totally disconnected. It was going to a little one-gallon container, and uh, there was a few of us he took for a ride, and we went 
about almost 200 miles on that one gallon of gas. And we'd stop every yep. 20, 30 miles yep. and look at it. And yep. uh, and this yep. is a huge Cadillac. This was a yep. huge, heavy duty. You know, now, nowadays the Cadillacs are, you know, like a joke almost compared to those things. Those things were solid and heavy. And, you know, those things were oh, yeah. serious machines. You know, they were <laughs> they were built like a tank. You know, they were solid, you know, heavy. And that thing went almost 200 miles. I'd say 190 miles, something like that, on a gallon of gas. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty yeah. amazing. And that was... That was all related to what you're talking about about vaporizing the fuel and all that stuff. So uh, it, it has to be done. At, it has to be done at the right temperature and done in the right way. Now the gas is not what it used to be. The gas today has uh, things that have to be made hotter in order for it all to work out. Um, so we tell people the temperature they need to do that. Um, it's a it's a high temperature that's needed, and once you get that temperature and it's stable. Uh, it is realistic to see the 100 to 200 miles to the gallon. Yeah, excellent, excellent. And, of course, uh, yeah, you can to judge those high temperatures, you can get a point-and-click thermometer nowadays. They're real easy to use and, and very accurate. Uh, yeah, if you, yeah, if you were going to put this in your car, you'd probably have some kind of thermometer probe or something that you'd be able to watch the temperature inside your cab and make sure everything's working. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Uh, okay, and let's let me, go on let to the next quick, one. I want to make a quick comment on that. Sure. Was, yeah, I, I won't. I want to. Uh, I want to make sure people understand that this is this is real. You're talking about because uh, it's it's not only JT and it's not only the ministry that worked on these high mileage projects. It really is real. They're not joking about the you know 100 or 200 miles uh, per gallon. There was a uh, there was a competition held. I hope I got the year. I, I think it was in the 70s by the Shell Corporation, and there was one uh, small team in their garage that uh, outfitted a. Uh, I think it was a uh, an Opal, and and uh, this was not a small car. I mean, it was a, it was a uh, uh, probably a four seater, I believe, sedan Opal, and uh, they did take a lot of the weight out. You know, they took the seats out and they chopped the roof down so it was a little lower to make it a little bit more aerodynamic. And they did. They took a lot of stuff out that they didn't need, but they basically employed some of these techniques, like uh, JT is talking about, and they they did a they got a record of I, I don't know what I think it was like 286 miles to the gallon, and and this was crude what they did. Uh -huh. I mean I've, I've seen pictures of this thing, and that's not a joke. That's not that's not you know just exaggeration, a myth that they never really did it. It really happened, and it seems like you know people forget about these things. So. I want to encourage people to look into JT's papers because I, I, I have uh, have looked over them and, and I completely uh, I completely know that he's he's legitimate and he's really telling you something that's really awesome here. So um, I wanted to break in. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother Tim. Definitely, definitely. Okay, thank you, uh, brother Martin, for that excellent comment. Uh, we got a comment from Dan in Wisconsin. Gas engines need close to stoichiometric ratio to run. Can be modified many ways. Still need to mix to fire. The latest fine spark devices can fire leaner mixtures. Uh, you have a comment on that, JT? It's not a question, just a comment. We can go on to the next one unless you have a comment. Well, yeah. I mean, again, there's there's a lot of folks who are quite familiar with normal gas burning engines. Uh, when you when you get the vapor thing right, a, a lot of you, you know there, you still got to have a, a good mixture of air and vapor. It's just it, the whole chemistry changes really with the altered fuel. Uh, the the vapor stuff isn't even isn't even the same kind of fuel people are used to. It has a the motor actually runs cooler in your car uh, when you're burning this stuff, and so a lot of things happen there. They're a little bit different. When you get it all right, yeah, and you can even go, uh, you know, to water. We've run cars 100% on water, uh, and the, the simplest, the simplest way for people to think about this is if you heat water above, uh, I think it's 5,200 Fahrenheit, I think, which is what, about 2,500 centigrade. Heat water above a certain point, it literally. Uh, well, burn, it, literally explodes. it turns to gas, of course, if you, you know, unless you have huge pressures, it'll be a gas, and it literally will explode uh, with a match, uh, you know, it mixed with air. So, uh, you know, there's there's uh, a lot of things will burn that people don't realize will burn if, if they're hot enough. Uh, so, 
Anyway, let's, let's go on to the next one. Brother Dan in Wisconsin, excuse me, Brother Chris Sachs. What area in the South Pacific is the Atlantis claim found? Uh, well, he's asking about the area. You want to comment on that, Brother JT? Yeah, it's the South China Sea, uh, India, uh, all in there. You can go online and look for something called uh, Atlantis Found. Uh, Professor Santo is the gentleman who wrote the book uh, on this uh, Alicio Santos um, Ar Ar Aricio Santos Professor Aricio Santos Lost Atlantis the Lost Continent Finally Found it's And just, just, so you, just so people know uh, the Philippines which is where I am right now is in the south China Sea. So we are yeah. in California. If you look at the Philippines, look at the world map, you'll see that it says the ocean is called the South China Sea that's surrounding the Philippines. So uh, that tells you where this, all these monuments here, these ancient monuments, these giant uh, stone, uh, some of them are exact cones, almost perfect cones, and some of them are exact pyramids, four-sided pyramids, and they're bigger than the pyramids of Egypt. Uh, and a lot of them are, and that's, it's just amazing. Not, oh, not all of them, they're different sizes, but uh, yeah, this is remnants of, of the pre-flood civilization. If you want to call it Atlantis, that's fine. I personally don't use that terminology a lot, but uh, whatever you want to call it. Well, it's, it's, it's a common term. It's a common term. Uh, you know, just so people know that this, this, uh, there has been like a little insider circle. A lot of people in that area now exploring archaeologists, all kinds of ocean Oceanographers now, when you know, you know, when you know where to look, you're bound to start finding something. And I think it's just been a case of people looking in the wrong place, and that's that's really been the argument. You find the right spot, you'll start to find the, the right things. Yes, yes, and there are a lot of artifacts that have been found, just so people know. Uh, and again, yeah. So thank you, brother Chris, for your questions and all the all the great all the great questions and all the brothers, all the listeners. Uh, Dan from Wisconsin says, as far as wasted energy from electricity. Would Ed Gray's motor help, or should we concentrate on generating electricity first? Uh, that's Dan in Wisconsin's question. You want you want to answer that, brothers? Either you brothers, or you want me to? Or I can do some with that. I, of course, I'm quite familiar with that motor, uh, which you know it could be argued that it's a radiant energy motor. I think you would say that as well. well oh, absolutely. Uh, so. Well, you know, the idea is, you know, if you're going to build a better motor that uses electricity more wisely, are you ahead of the game? And I'd say, sure, why not? Absolutely. If, if, you're, if your motor runs more efficiently, it uses half, one quarter, one tenth, one one hundred the energy, then that would be a very good approach. And I think that is the concept behind the gray motor is that on less outside consumption, you get more results. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Edwin Gray was a member of the ministry. He learned most of his stuff from the ministry. He took off on his own. He was good at raising money. Uh, I would say good, or you know, he was more skilled. I don't know if "good's" the right terminology. Uh, a lot of times, if you you know, if you, if you if you don't raise money properly, you can wind up your investors lose all their money, and that's not good. And that's what happened with Ed Gray, and and uh, same thing with Stan Myers. Uh, you know, a lot of these people, you know, I don't know if good's the right terminology, but their skill with raising money, uh, maybe bad is the right terminology, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> but uh, their skill with raising money, and so they, they do a lot of promoting, and so they become quite famous, uh, <laughs> but uh, they wind up getting themselves killed. And, uh, you know, because they're, they're not working at the team, uh, they're, you know, they're, and they're not necessarily following the lead of God either. Uh, in other words, uh, yeah. So and that's what happened with Ed Gray and and Stan Meyer both. Uh, they they both got started with the ministry. Uh, next question from Jim Libby says, "Can we discuss the December third events? Uh, Mercury, Mar Venus, Saturn are directly above the Giza pyramids. Any thoughts on this? You have any thoughts on that, JT? Briefly, uh, the idea of." cosmic alignment, when you think of everything as the wheel work of nature, um, as you know, things can line up, and things can line up with the stars and the heavens. There's a well-known uh, bunch of scientific information that calls into play things called natural stargates, which is an energy vortex that can occur from an alignment 
with the earth and the stars from other places. This idea that somehow the will work of nature, when you hit an alignment, certain date, certain time, certain planets, so forth and so on, that, that there is an energetic event. And that is all accurate and correct as to what anyone might do with that energetic event or what that energe energetic event might do to the planet, so forth and so on. Well, that, that, that's something to be explored. Yeah. And that's good enough common for me. I, do you have anything you want to add, Brother Martin? I think that was an excellent ex explanation. I mean, when we when we look at uh, the uh, universe working in a more of a more of an electrical type model, uh, that makes a lot of sense, really. Actually, so these alignments yeah, are, and they all have, do something. Yeah, absolutely. They all have a magnetic field. They all have a gravitational field. They all have an electric field. And any time everybody knows, you line up two magnets, it gets stronger than if you have one. You line up three magnets, it gets stronger if you have one or two. You know, well, and so on. And and now now the new understanding of gravity, which is that the so-called gravity comes from the magnetic, electric, and cosmic fields all around. That's actually what's creating the effect that we yeah. call gravity. Uh, so you, you start to view and think about gravity differently as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, so obviously there are going to be a, an energetic event or, or a more energetic uh, time, a short time there when there are alignments. So, yeah. And as far as what exactly it means or what exactly going to happen, it's uh, it's still like you say a matter of uh, observation and research and so on. It's uh, well, there there are those of course that say that these things will cause earthquakes, so forth and so on. And again, we know that the moon causes tides, so forth and so on. So yes. Uh, when you get alignments, there can be forces and pressures felt by the Earth. Is that yeah. all true? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, next uh, next comment. Um, let's see. Yeah, Brother Dan in Wisconsin, electrogravitic craft government is pushing, is publishing some with the B-2, some information about the B-2s, I think is what it means. I would like to know more about this. Yeah, tune in to future shows, Brother Dan. We're going to be covering anti-gravity more. If you don't hear uh, us to talk about anti-gravity in the next month, send us a reminder on an email. We'll, we'll definitely be covering anti-gravity more, more thoroughly. Uh, next comment, Brother Dan from Wisconsin and Chris Sachs, both asking about the sky bike. What can you say about it, and what is the possibility of seeing or making a working model of it? We've made several working models of the sky bike. Uh, we have demonstrated them. Uh, it is something on the list uh, of technologies we'd like to get out into the world. They need to be mass produced, just like anything. Uh, you're looking at um, uh, as, the far, as far as the question is, uh, what what's the possibility of seeing and making a working model? Yeah, we offer demos and so on. Uh, they're going to be more. Just look on the gifts page under demos. They're going to be more expensive than the free energy demos because you're going to have to build, rebuild everything. Uh, all over again. Uh, the last model was stolen, just so you know, on Skybike. Uh, so currently we don't have a model demonstrable. But uh, just look on the gifts page. We do offer uh, we do offer uh, uh, demonstrations. And next comment from Brother Chris Sachs: Does light always travel at the same speed in a vacuum? What do you think, Brother JT? No. Okay, I agree. I agree. Can you change the speed, he says. Um, hmm. Well, yeah. I don't know if it's the answer directly in changing the speed. It's, it's more like you change the media that it's passing through. Uh, it's well known that when light passes through a prism that, that the spectrum fans out. And, and it, it can be argued by anybody that somehow that uh, piece of glass is altering the speed of light through that media. So we do it commonly in science and physics labs, but for some re reason people fail to understand that you're actually modifying the speed of light when it goes through a different substance. Yeah. And, and, yet that, and, and, that's and, exactly what's happening. and I would say a perfect vacuum does not exist. Uh, in other words, he's asking about in a vacuum. Uh, vacuum means absence of all matter, basically. Uh, a perfect vacuum does not exist. But So there's always light is always traveling through some medium. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's if you had a what, what, what the listener what the listener may find exceedingly surprising is that there are some regions in space where what we say the velocity, the speed of light, is quite a bit faster than what we think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
It depends on, uh, I would say it depends, the, in other words, if you have the exact same vacuum, the exact same light source, and you're, you're having, uh, you've eliminated all electromagnetic and gravitational influences, all energy influences, then your, your, energy, your light would travel at the same speed every time. But it's hard to do all that. Uh, yeah, so almost virtually impossible. Basically. Well, yeah, the cosmos is not a homogenous uh, substance. Right, right. So thank you, Brother Chris, for that excellent question and comment, and Brother Dan also from Wisconsin, and Brother Escala uh, says, uh, this information about gravity is absolutely outstanding. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Brother Escala. Thank you for being uh, being uh, such a wonderful brother. He's, he's a wonderful brother. Uh, in our prayers all the time. Blessings on Brother Escala. And then he also says, Brother JT, wow. I have always believed you could get much better mileage by heating gasoline to the correct temperature. Thank you so much for this confirmation. So that's a con okay. thank you to Brother JT, and then uh, well, hopefully he'll he'll go ahead and get the report. And speaking of the report, both uh, you and Tim, you, you do need to get more up to date report. Okay, send records. send us a uh, updated version. We'll add it in. Actually, send it to uh, Brother Litke, and uh, if you can, and we'll add it by email, and we'll add it in uh, the updated the new updated version. So from now on, everybody will get the updated one. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for that, JT. Uh, Brother Jim Libby says, was the ministry involved in the BICC project? And uh, I don't, that doesn't ring a bell, so it may not be one that we were involved in. Do you know what that is by chance, Brother JT? No, it, not off the top of my head. Doesn't ring a bell. There are a lot of projects that have unusual names, and I don't remember all of them. Yeah, I don't know if that's somebody who's got a little insider black ops project that he's trying to see if we know anything about. Yeah, no, I, yeah, we'd have to look it up online to see to answer that question properly. I'd have to do a little research on that. Um, that takes it could be a low. It could it could be a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> that takes care of the uh, questions and the comments that came in on uh, on the uh, uh, in the chat window. We've got one or two, I think, on the uh, that came in by email. I'm opening that. Uh, uh, Let's see, Brother Levi here. Let's see what he has to say. Uh, he has one that came in, and if if my computer will cooperate, he says, "Which English Bible translation would you recommend to read?" Uh, I would recommend you find one in your native language. Brother Levi is uh, he doesn't he speaks a, a different language. It's he's from Transylvania, so whatever they speak over there, I guess is Russian. It's not Transylvanian or whatever. Uh, so I'd recommend you get a Bible in your native language if you can, and uh, and that's a good place to start. But don't anytime anytime you're reading along or studying and you, you're you're uh, there's a question that comes in something that comes in your spirit. Let's say a bump in your spirit, a little a little nudge in your spirit to look at a certain word, then look it up in the Greek or look it up in the Hebrew, whatever it was originally written in, and there's a lot of, and look it up in all the different translations too, and that'll help you study more than anything you can do, is by learning what, the way God wrote it, the way God intended for it to be read, and, um, and that'll bless you, in other words, that'll help you understand it better. Did either of you brothers have a comment on that? That's good, I'm good on that. Okay. All right. Uh, well, let's see if we have any other questions. I think we might have one or two more. Let me uh, let me just look here. Question. Yeah, the gravity subject is always fascinating. It, it just you know I always take it for granted that people sort of know what I know, and I, I constantly get reminded that people really very few people actually know the truth about gravity out there. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of confused disinformation. What were you yeah. going to say, brother? Martin? I was going to say a lot more people know about the uh, induction coil and maybe the kickback from an induction coil. And that, and that is probably somewhat rare in itself because when I first started studying some of these things, many engineers didn't, didn't really know too much about inductors in general, much less the inductive right. kickback and the properties of an, an, an inductor. So when you talk about gravity... That's a that's a tiny tiny uh, cross section of engineers that, that think about that kind of thing or, or, or physicists or whatever you want to call them, and uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, very 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 few people have uh, 
a sort of an expanded awareness of thinking about gravity differently than simply something we don't know anything about and it pulls you to the earth. So uh, it's always fascinating when you when you start talking about those subjects because it it re- people that are open to it can really start you know thinking differently or at least start at least prospecting in that direction. Yeah, amen. Brother Kyle, along that lines, Brother Kyle has an excellent comment that came in by email. He says, this reminds me of the scripture that says, God has hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. All the wisdom and knowledge, the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, he has hid in Christ, in Colossians 2, 3, 2 and 3, and that Christ dwells in us, Colossians 1, 26 and 27. Therefore, he has hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge in us. Isn't that awesome? Yep. That is awesome. That's an awesome comment. Thank you, Brother Kyle. Excellent comment. I appreciate that. And uh, Brother, looks like Brother Rand forwarded a, a couple more comments. Um, PICC was a catalytic converter of some type to increase mileage. Yeah, I, I have. I hate catalytic converters. I thank God I've never had to work. I've never had to work on one of those. I just thank God. And so I. So yeah, you can definitely count me out of that one. <laughs> well, it looked. It looks like when you get the uh, vapor thing right on your car, uh, you absolutely burn clean. You don't need a catalytic converter. A catalytic converter in a converted car wouldn't even get hot. There wouldn't be any fuel left in the exhaust to even fire the catalytic converter up. It'd probably sit there and stay cold. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay, and then Brother Jim Boland says this catalytic converter was put in front of the fuel and got great mileage. Uh, so basically, it sounds like uh, they're preheating the fuel using a catalytic converter, and uh, and then you know, so it's a similar device to what your your uh, what your high mileage plans and what we've been talking about. Yeah, it's but, it's almost identical in the sense that uh, the trick to that device was actually used the heat of the engine and another trick to get the heat up on the device. Otherwise, um, as I say in my report on device number two, you have to put the external heat in there through uh, some other means. And so the idea is I was using essentially the essence of the catalytic converter to kick the temperature up of my device. Yeah, there we go. Without, I was doing it in a smaller scale, and that was the... 50 to 100 percent improvement, but in the larger device that gets the five to ten times, you simply have to have more volume than device one that I talk about in that report. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you, brother JT, for all your wonderful insight and comments and sharing your knowledge with us, brother Timothy Martin. Thank you so much for sharing your insight and your knowledge and comments, wonderful comments, and all the listeners. Thank you so much. You guys are the most important part of our team. We really love you. And appreciate your comments and your and your moral support and praying and believing God with us. Uh, we appreciate all that. That's that's fantastic. Together we can change the world. Just enough enough people learn to agree in faith and start walking in faith and the power of God. Miracles can become commonplace for everybody, and it's it's an awesome thing. I I often think about uh, Brother Escala. He's he's talked about the. Um, uh, the the movie The Matrix and in a sense we live in a matrix uh, if yeah. people, but we have just like the the main character Neil in The Matrix was able to start controlling his surroundings uh, it, we'd call that miracles is what we call that by the power of God it's all doable it's all absolutely doable and uh, it's just a matter of people studying and uh, believing that you can and then and believing that it's done before it looks like it's done and we have we have tremendous power and authority right here on this earth and uh, it's an awesome thing God wants everybody to share and to learn and to start progressing in these things and his children to start uh, commanding things to happen and they happen we don't have to be under the Satan's foot in other words the dark side and his bunch we don't have to be under his foot and uh, we Jesus conquered him and he left us in charge and we're supposed to be an occupational army anytime we see him getting out of line whether it's in government or banking or money system or whatever we need to talk we need to work together and take authority and and set those things right command those things and believe them so keep keep growing, everybody out there. Keep growing in faith and in power and, and the love of God. 
and these things, uh, faith, hope, and love, these three, these things, these three, and the greatest of these is love, and this is the Word of God, and uh, the second greatest is faith, and the third greatest is hope. So keep growing in that, in the, in the things of God, and uh, we will keep doing great victories, and we'll do even greater victories in the near future, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, any other, um, any other final questions or comments for any of your brothers? I'm waiting, I'm waiting for JT. Uh, yeah, well, gentlemen, again, thanks for having me this evening. I, I hope you both, both enjoyed it, and all, as well as the listeners. I always enjoy being on the show and look forward to some future uh, future shows. Yeah, we enjoy having you, brother. You're always a blessing, and it's always a great encouragement for the listeners uh, to, to hear firsthand uh, you know, what you've seen and what you've done and what we're working on. And, uh, and if everything goes right... Uh, uh, we're going to be working together, and uh, if everything goes as, as planned, we're going to join JT and I and a few others will be working together uh, soon on, a, on another project, and we'll talk more about it later. But, uh, yeah, hopefully the home power system, that's the goal, and we want to get these into the hands of people. So uh, we believe God, and we'll just keep pushing on in that direction. Okay. Learn, I, go ahead. I was going to say I have one one last little thing I wanted to throw out at the end of the show here because we don't really have time to talk about it tonight and maybe we will talk about it more in depth in another show uh, but I did mention it in the newsletter if people are, are getting our newsletters uh, and it's about the original <laughs> this is a totally different subject but I'm just going to throw it out there because I, I did mention it in the newsletter and I wanted to just mention it on the show uh, and it's about uh, the, the United States Constitution and um, and this is a complete segue from the show, but it's like the thir the original 13th Amendment of the Constitution isn't in our current day Constitution and was actually never repealed. It was just taken off the uh, and hidden from us. And uh, and another, uh, basically the 14th became the 13th, which, which is about slavery. The original 13th Amendment to the Constitution, which was removed, had to do with who could serve in the U.S. government, and it just so happens anyone with the title of Esquire, like a lawyer or a or a justice, was basically n not eligible to serve uh, in our in our government, and that is is uh, shown. Uh, I can I'm going to provide these links uh, for for people to go research this themselves, but that was shown if we go back to the textbooks. Back in the uh, middle of the 1800s, uh, I'll bring a link here for one that's archived from 1843, which is a book called uh, The Young American Book of Government and Law. Back then, uh, uh, lawyers practiced uh, common law, and they weren't uh, a member of any institution like the bar, uh, and they taught each other about law and, co and how common law works. And that's what they practiced back then. Uh, and this book uh, that is online, you can go look for yourself, has the, uh, the Constitution uh, described in there, and they have the original 13th Amendment, and it's in there. And so I just wanted to throw that on the show so people would you know, give them something to chew on uh, until the next time, uh, and we'll post the links here. So that's all I had yeah. tonight. Oh, I think it's excellent. Thank you for bringing it up. I know we were we had said we were going to talk about that a little bit. I I think it's excellent for people to realize that there's a huge uh, uh, conspiracy, not a theory. It's a huge it's a huge bunch of crooks working together to corrupt everything. And and the and the Thirteenth Amendment said that none of these people with any kind of title are supposed to serve in government. They're not supposed to serve in Congress. They're not supposed to be judges. They're not supposed to be lawyers. They're not allowed to serve. And yet, uh, and of course, that disqualifies me because I have the sir title. But that's okay. I don't need to be president. I don't need to be. I don't need to be serving Congress. I can serve God Almighty uh, just fine. But uh, but what what I'm saying, and again, to me, it's not about a title. To me, it's about what the job description. In other words, a, a knight is somebody who goes around and helps people. Uh, and so uh, now, Esquire, I don't know what that's supposed to mean exactly, but. Uh, uh, I know all the lawyers we have nowadays, almost all of them are Esquire, and almost all of them are up to no good. And so if that's their job description, then, <laughs> then somebody's up to no good. 
Uh, if you do, if you go to them and you pay them money, they usually tell you the, the, the wrong thing to do almost every time. And if you do what they tell you, you get yourself in more trouble. So your best off is to go to them, pay them money, and do the opposite of whatever they tell you. And, uh, and that always works out pretty good for me. Uh, so... <laughs> So uh, anyway, yeah, I, I'm I believe that Thirteenth Amendment belonged there, and uh, that it did get sn snuck out or taken out uh, unlawfully. It took it taken out, un unrighteously taken out. And of course, they've they've unrighteously and unlawfully even taken out the Ten Commandments. Now they've taken out God out of the. Uh, last time I went to court, they didn't even swear to tell the truth, the whole truth. Nobody swore. Nobody had a Bible. Nothing. It was. It blew my mind. It, right. it just blew my mind. Nobody's there swearing to tell the truth. Nobody's uh, nobody's no Bible. I mean, it's just like a bunch of liars all lying to each other, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not everything. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so they threw God out of the court, and then they wonder why they got a godless court, you know. And <laughs> yeah. And they throw God out of uh, you know. Anyway, get me going, man. <laughs> I know. Back. I didn't mean. I didn't mean to get you going. So I, you, I'm going to cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, one final comment is not only did they sneak out the 13th Amendment and put the 14th where the 13th was, but then later they snuck in an amendment that never was ratified, never was voted in, and that's called the one, it's called the tax law or the tax amendment, and that only applies to government, again, to federal government agencies. So there is no, uh, the, actually the Constitution and the amendments guarantee a freedom from tax. And uh, and the, so to this day we still have it. Even if the fourteenth, even if I think that's called the sixteenth amendment, right? right that's the even if the sixteenth amendment, even if the sixteenth amendment was ratified, which it was not. Yeah, in other words, not only did they remove one that what that should have been valid and should be there still to this day, but they also they also uh, put one in there that was never ratified, never was voted in. It was voted down three times, and the third time they went ahead and pretended like it passed, and it didn't. And they told everybody it passed, even though it didn't. So that's that's uh, just so people know what's going on. The, there's a lot of a lot of liars in government, and they probably all have a title of Esquire. That's probably right. <laughs> that's probably right. <laughs> and we've even had presidents that have been lawyers, and and most likely a title of Esquire. Uh, so again, they don't belong there. They don't qualify. But neither does Obama. As far as I know, he can't find a, nobody can find a birth certificate that has it's valid that has his name on it. You know? So. Anyway, he's the illegal alien that snuck in from somewhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, well, he, anyway, he's, so, he's he's the president of the corporation, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah, he can get away with that. His first <laughs> act when he got in, I I don't know if I ever said this on the show or not, but it's true. You can look it up. His first act within the first a couple hours when he got in to being president, he signed a law that said it's illegal for anybody to ask for his birth certificate or any kind of private papers like that, right. any kind of ID or anything. It's illegal for anybody to ask for that. Basically, he sealed all his papers. Yeah, yeah. So that that's if that isn't suspicious, uh, you know, you know, that's about as suspicious as it gets. You know, obvious that he's up to no good. But uh, anyway, all right. Uh, yeah. So hope, hopefully that helps people realize what's going on. The only way to stand up against this stuff is to stand in faith and in power of God. And again, we're against all enemies, foreign and domestic, to the United States, uh, the real United States of America, the Constitution of America, and the godliness of America. And one nation under God is still is still valid uh, with liberty and justice for all. That's still valid, and that's all part of the uh, part of the uh, oaths that people take when they serve in government. So uh, we can set everything right. Just a matter of us working together in Jesus Christ, in God Almighty. And so that's that's it. Unless you guys have any final comments, I'll close. Blessings to everyone out there. All right, and blessings awesome. and blessings to you, brother JT, and everybody out there, uh, brother brother Martin and his family. And until next time, may God's richest and best be yours. Good night, everybody. <laughs>